Kali here, uh, live inside several groups and pages on Facebook and also on YouTube channel. So wherever you're joining us from, welcome. With me here is Mark Helton, who is the founder of Hot Prospect, Hot Prospector, which is a very powerful um, tool for sales automation and client management system. So we're going to go into detail on how it works. You know, um, we can also do a setup, I think, of my account here live if possible. So we'll try to do this within an hour. Sorry for the we were late by a few minutes because we were doing setup here. Takes a few minutes to get things together. And so I hope everybody <laughs> will enjoy the show and, you know, welcome, Mark. Thank you. Okay. Perfect. So I'm going to start from scratch. When you buy the tool, uh, some of you guys have been having issue with redemptions, complications here and there, not finding the training. Uh, that's called, it's a comprehensive tool, as Mark always likes to say. And it has a lot of features. It's very complex. It's not like something that you can, I say complex all the time, but he likes comprehensive. But for somebody to understand it properly, you need to take your time and understand what's needed to set up everything. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to share my screen and from scratch, redeem a code and show you guys how this works. Hopefully uh, you can see what happens and you can ignore some of the automation that comes here. Like there was an email that was coming, uh, firing over that said, thank you for your trial account or something like that. Hopefully that's off now. Um, uh, let's go. I'm going to, I'm going to actually try to uh, create an account or oh, no. uh, a trade account for uh, digital thing. So let me share my screen with you guys. Uh, I'm going to share the screen here. And then Mark, I don't know if you can see my screen. Can you see it? Yes, I'm going into, there we go. I was going to say into a, a tunnel. Okay, now out of the tunnel. Can you see the your website here? Yep. So the first thing you want to do is to actually go and you will see there will be instructions for you to go through everything. Like there's a uh, hot, uh, if you look at uh, Hot Prospector, there's um, <clears throat> a link for it. So hotprospector.com forward slash digital thing. First step, you're going to have put the code here. So I actually grabbed one already. So I'm going to put it here and submit. Now it asks for my information. So I'm going to actually take this information. Uh, let me see here. Put a new email here because I already have existing ones. It's... it's Remembering uh, support at digital thing dot io, and I'm gonna use. Uh, can I use an existing number that I already used? Can I reuse it? You should be able to, but if Let's, you have a problem, let me know. Let me see. Okay, I'm gonna keep everything else the same and so select an industry. Just put it for now something other, and then team size one to two. This is my time. Uh, I don't know what 12 a.m. means. I uh, just put it here. Okay, the time. So I'm going to submit. Oh, the phone number already exists. 647. All right. Try it again. Okay. Let's see here. Support at. I'm going to use a different email. Let's see if that works. Okay. Schoolpoint.ca. Okay, try again. 647 693 9335. Let me see. Same problem, account with phone number exists. Mm. So should I should I put a new number? One second. Yeah, do you have another account? I do. Ah, okay. Okay, let me try this one. Uh, I'm gonna use a different number, okay. Okay, that's it. And now we can go ahead and try. Uh, accept the terms and conditions, submit. Okay, thank you. And I will update support at school point. Okay. Now, thank you for creating your free account. This is what comes up. This is what people are like a little bit concerned about. So I want you to also yeah. note on that. It's just the, because the account was already paid for, our system is calling it free. You paid for it in a different way throughout, okay. not in our platform. Yeah. Perfect. So let's uh, go to my inbox for this, for support at school point. <clears throat> I 
and I'm going to log in and see what emails come up. Oh, my numbers are coming in, so I need my... Don't worry about this. Well, so I have seven. Okay. Go from there. And now I have something come up, HR live system. Okay, good. So your account, see account created. This is what I see. Oh, I put the password there. Okay, good. <laughs> I'm gonna have to change that quickly. Let's go back, log in. So, so that's something that you may have to think about sharing the password in public. Okay, I'm gonna log in. And now I need to send validation code to this email. Uh, and it's gonna come to me. So I'm not gonna share that in my emails anymore. I'm, I'm checking from my phone. Um, but quickly, let's go in. <clears throat> so I got an email. We're doing, uh, from scratch, we're doing the account setup for Hot Prospector. And now it's asking me for an email to verify my, my, so it gave me a code to do the verification. Six, four, three, seven, eight, eight. And I'm going to verify. And now I have my phone number. I'm going to verify. And I got a text. So I'm going to put the verification code. This is all to make sure that you're not spamming, I guess. Uh, why do we no, have this is just to verify who you are. That's also we uh, have your contact information. But yeah, if if there is a you know some need, if we have the need to be able to reach out to you, this is why we need that information to be accurate. I'm in Canada, so save this, and that's my city is Toronto. By the way, something to con consider here: um, there are t uh, there are new restrictions or rules when it comes to SMS in the US that everybody needs to register for. It's called A to P 10 DLC A to P. So okay. if you're in Canada and you're only using the system in Canada, then you won't have to, um, you won't have to register for those things. But if you are sending any messages from, Canada to the United States, then you're going to have to register for the uh, for the A to P 10 DLC. Right. Okay. Which is something that you could do inside of the system. So, and then you have to agree to these terms and conditions. And um, I'll put my initials here, <clears throat> and we're good to go. And now I have my account. Okay. Uh, when I have to. Okay. So now this is what I have. What do I need to do now to go from here? First of all, how do I know how do I know how many accounts do I have like here? How many how many Yeah, so if you just click on the yep, the profile icon in the top right. Yes. And then uh, once you click on that, okay. click on settings and go to team team. Yeah, team. Click on add new member. And if you select the package details on the right, it'll show you how many members you have. Yeah, so I have the name is 497 Digital Think, package interval lifetime, and member license available 40. So automatically upgraded actually. So that's good. Uh, we had 20, but now if you're buying the first 50, we're getting, uh, so this is great. Now you have it there. So a lot of you question. A lot of you have been asking me that question. How do I? By the way, you just used one of those codes. Yes, yes, I did. I did. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's good. Of course, I I bought for. I paid for it. It's not free. For one of the first. One of the first to do fifty. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> or one of the first fifty. Sorry. Yes, we have like maybe eight more people left on that one. I guess. So um, where is everyone here? Uh, so. You go to team one more time, and then you add a team member. So that's why it's hidden until you 
hit the team member adding and then the package details that's where you so it's that's why people are like how do i even know where my how many num members do i have so now we know okay good now next is somebody was asking where do i find tutorials there's a lot of them here i think step by step how to create a group is this the onboarding like the actual onboarding yeah, this is the basic setup of your account so this mm -hmm. setup v these setup videos would be the first thing that I would do if I were getting in just to make sure that I have my account set up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. And you can change the colors and the design of this, how it looks. You can change all this under the settings, right? Yep. So if I want to change the looks so that matches my logo and everything, where do I go from here? Go to advanced. Uh, yep. And then you can change the logo here. So remove this and put my own so does it have to be oh i have to look at the size file but i'm gonna just try to see if i can find anything for digital thing logo okay digital thing logo uh let me try the black or blue logo okay try that and let's see change no why did I say change? Uh, submit. Submit. I'm getting some questions. Somebody asking questions. One second. Oh, thank you. Okay, excellent. So I think it, it didn't register, but I can change this this to digital thing. I can change the name of the brand. Okay. Uh, the logo didn't work for me. So maybe the size is it the right size i don't think it is um, okay let me just submit that for now okay so okay so i have the colors i can change these two colors to something that looks like my website's branding so the color of digital thing is if you go to us i can choose a color picker here and point anywhere grab that color from here and then get the code and now i can be consistent with my brand and put this color here and this color is it the same yeah probably put it the same and anything that looks red no no okay maybe this should be left alone but here and submit and you can see now the color has changed everything now looks like exactly uh, like the digital thing colors, right? So that's the branding. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, of course, I haven't, I don't have time to do the logo resizing all that time. So we're going to continue from there. So let's set up, like if I want to do the phone call and everything, we have to go into Twilio. Or where do you want to start the basics from? Yeah, so I think the first thing you probably should do is get your phone service set up. So up at the okay. top right hand side, there's a button that says enable phone service. Okay. Click on that. And then you want to select Twilio. Mm -hmm. And here you'll see uh, on the right hand side, help. So there are some, some instructions here on how to set up your Twilio. So just go ahead and click on get new account. That's going to take you to that link. And then right underneath that. So that's where you start the process of setting up your account. But right under that other video yeah. or right under that link, Mm -hmm. There is a video. So if you select the watch how to get your Twilio account. Hello, in this video, I'm going to walk you through setting up a Twilio account. Now, the Twilio account is what is you. So, yeah, I see the video. Okay. This is great. Yeah, so if you've never set up Twilio, it's... It, it takes a few minutes, but that video, I, I walk you through everything that you need to do. Yeah, so we don't need to redo this part. Exactly. So once you connect here, do we need to? So maybe I have to go uh, and, and add my account SID and authentication token. That's all I need? Yes. And do I need and, a... and And actually, no, before you can continue, mm -hmm. you do have to create your primary, your Trust Hub primary customer profile SID. So all of those things need to be created before mm -hmm. 
you can submit or save the information here. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Why do we need to create that? This uh, valid primary customer profile. Right. So it's because of the new registration requirements that are uh, required here in the United States. Right. They require every business to register themselves. Mm -hmm. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. Now, um, if you don't have some of the requirements, like if you're outside of the country mm -hmm. and you're not going to be marketing into the U S right, then you can, you know, you can actually, um, just create your information. Matter mm -hmm. of fact, if you're having, if you're having some kind of, if you're having some kind of issues registering with Twilio, mm -hmm. definitely reach out to our support and uh, they'll do what they can to try to help you. But if if we need to bypass that inside of your account because you're in a different country and you're only marketing in that country, right. just like I said, reach out to support. They'll be back in the office for regular business hours on Monday. So Monday, starting Monday. Okay, good. What else do I need to know after this step? What happens? After this step? Mm -hmm. then you're going to want to go in and uh, probably set up your email. That would be the next thing I would do. Okay, so the email also set up. Good. Yeah. So this is where the SMTP servers come in? Yeah, you can use the SMTP, mm -hmm. but you also have the ability to use SendGrid or Amazon for sending. I personally would suggest using SendGrid or Amazon because the – there's less restrictions when it comes to sending SMTP. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sorry. When it comes to sending via SMTP, the uh, the problem is, is that you're cutting off. You're cutting off. I think you moved a little bit. Maybe you need to plug your phone back into it. No, no, I haven't done anything. It's up here. Oh no. Yeah. Sound. Can you hear me? Uh, no, the sound is still having a problem. I think you pulled your flag out. I haven't done, I haven't done anything. Uh, Nothing different. And actually, I'm looking at the audio yeah, settings. Let's see. let's see what people hear. Can you guys hear? Let's see. Let's go to the chat area. That's the system scrub. Oh, I'll come to those questions, guys. But do you guys hear? Okay, go ahead. Let's see. If you guys can hear, let's know. Yes, we can. Okay, go up. Okay, you can hear. They can hear you. Okay, let's go ahead. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to continue to share the screen. Okay. So, yeah, go ahead. Um, one second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now I hear you clean. You hear yeah. me okay? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. All right. So, um, yeah, what I was saying about the custom, custom SMTP option is that right. many of the SMTP servers that we're communicating mm -hmm. with have limitations. Mm -hmm. So if you click on a custom, custom SMTP, mm you'll see there's an option at the bottom that allows you to limit the hour per hour limit. Right. But per even though, yep. Even though we give you the option to limit the per hour limit for SMTP, one mm -hmm. thing you'll find is some of the SMTP providers will also have like a minute, mm -hmm. um, by the minute restriction. Mm -hmm. And so if, the problem, like I said, the big problem with SMTP is that you may think you're sending a thousand emails, mm -hmm. but they're not getting passed from our system to the S to the SMTP provider. Right. And it's not because we're sending it to them, but it's like hitting a brick wall and falling because they have a restriction. So you can keep trying to send, you can keep trying to send, but they're not, they're not accepting it. Mm. So th this is why if you're going to send a, a significant amount of email, Right. The best options are going to be Amazon or S uh, or SendGrid because they're specifically set up to 
allow you to send however much email you need or want to send. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Uh, so then you set up your number, your phone number. So one thing too, if yeah. you go on, to, if you click, for example, my, my favorite personally is SendGrid mm -hmm. just because they have really good, they have a really good API. But if right. you click on SendGrid mm -hmm. and here where it says signing into your account, creating the API, we actually have on the right, some help instructions mm -hmm. on how to do that. Good. Excellent. Yeah. So, so step, step one, set up the phone with all the instructions clear. Step two, set up the email with all the instructions clear. Okay, good. Step three, what do we do? So the next step really is going to be depending on what exactly, you know, your needs are. Mm -hmm. um, go over to the uh, rocket at the top right. Yeah. Or top, top left, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So for me... I, I like to try to get my data uh, infrastructure set up on a CRM before I would start using it. Okay. So here's where you want to think through your process just a little bit. Right. And, and just say, okay, so how do I plan to run the show, so to speak? Mm -hmm. how, how am I going to prospect? What are the things that I want to collect? And again, like what are you using the system for? All of these things are things you want to consider in your mind. But let's just say you're using it for prospecting. Right. Who am I calling? What are my qualifying questions? Mm -hmm. What fields do I want to import in the system? And what additional data do I need to collect from the persons that I'm talking to or communicating with? Like all of those things, mm -hmm. you should think through them. Right. And the way I would first start would be to open up an, a, a spreadsheet mm -hmm. or, or even a notepad. Mm -hmm. And I would start taking some notes down about those things. So we'll start with like, you know, qualifying questions. Right. 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 And I would say, you know, I want to know what's their budget. Mm -hmm. I want to know what are they currently spending for marketing? Mm -hmm. I want to know, um, you know, how much um, they're doing every month in sales. Like what's their, their current revenue? How many salespeople they have? What are they trying to get to? What's their target? Like all of those types of questions that you would need right. in order to take a, a decision maker and convert them into a client. That would be the first thing I would do. So get all of those things lined out. Right. Then I would go into custom fields mm -hmm. and then I would add those, those in. So custom fields are specific to what you want to create. How, do, how does it work? So I added fields. So custom so fields, so let's talk about fields, right? So mm -hmm. fields are areas in the platform where you have the ability to add information about, uh, you know, uh, from the, that you've collected from that contact, from that lead. Right. So the default fields at the top, you have your first name, last name, email. We have landline, which is meaning like an actual physical phone in, you know, like, like a hard line. And then you have a mobile number. The reason why those are separate is because you can't send text to landline, but you can send text to mobile. So you, if you plan to send a text to the leads that you're importing, make sure you import them into the mobile field, the phone. Right. Um, then you have city, state, mm -hmm. zip. Mm -hmm. If you scroll down mm -hmm. and then you have, uh, address, company, company is going to be the name of the company, website, the website of the company. Additional info is kind of like, kind of like sticky notes, mm -hmm. really. Like I use that a lot if I just want to put some quick note for myself because mm -hmm. um, there's, it shows up on the main view of the contact. So it's kind of a nice little thing. Scroll down. And then the final thing I think is title. Right. Is it possible to edit any of these to remove them? No, so we have the option for you to add additional fields, mm -hmm. and that is custom fields mm -hmm. down at the bottom. So you can see there are some fields that are custom fields that are uh, instantly added. Right. But over on the top right where it says add field, go ahead and click on that. Yeah, add field. Yep. And so when you when it when you click on it, the field opens up. It's the top there. You can name the field. So let's say for example, budget. Right. 
And then on the right, you have options for that field type. So is it a text box, meaning is it just a standard text field? Is it an area, meaning you need more information? Is it considered a name? Uh, so if like, is it a contact name? Is it their phone, email, uh, mobile phone, any of those types of things? So right. if you're collecting multiple contacts that you want to have in one field, right. you can have like, uh, you know, contact, uh, first name one, uh, sorry, first or first name contact one or contact two, right? Mm -hmm. Last name contact two, right? Right. right. Last uh, phone contact two mobile right. contact two. And then you can set, put them all together into a field group, which I'm going to show you here in just a second. But those, those tokens are, are those, um, field types are very important. Hit that drop down again for me. Mm -hmm. uh, then, then you have uh, date. Now there are areas inside of the system mm -hmm. where date is used for specific things. We have something called event reminders. Right. So if you're going to be importing something that might actually need to be used based off that date, off that date, then you have to make sure you use the date field. Right. That uh, you know for that field. Mm -hmm. So that field type needs to be a date. And that, and that, and you need to also make sure that the format when you import the lead matches the format for it to work. Okay. okay. And uh, go ahead and select that drop down again. You've got uh, radio options, which is going to give you the ability to have like yes, no, whatever, like just different options where you can select a radio button. Right. right? So, like, let's say red, put in red, mm -hmm. and then, uh, you know, blue. Right. Right, so you can have different options that people can type in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The next option underneath radio mm -hmm. is gonna be a uh, checkbox, which is something similar to what you just saw, except for instead of that, you have a checkbox. Mm -hmm. And then the next one above that is gonna be link. So you would wanna use this if you're putting maybe another type of a website or some kind of a URL that you wanna have that's clickable. Right, right. Okay. So. Ooh. Go ahead and uh, just select, say, save that field. Oh. Actually, you know what? Let's add a couple. Let's add a couple more. Uh, change that from link to. Um... I didn't save anything, so. Okay, so go ahead and put in uh, budget. Budget. Okay. Yep. Text. Text. It will be text area. Yeah. Yep. No, no text. Text. Not text area. Text box. Number. Or text box. box. Okay. Yep. Okay. Now click add field again, and then let's let's put in. Um, Revenue. Mm -hmm. And then cool. I would select, yep, and then click add field again. And let's say um, uh, goal. And then add another field. Leave That's it cool. there. Nope, just leave it there. That's and then cool. add another field. And, and let's put uh, decision maker. And then go ahead and click save. So now you've created like like we're just going to call this a basic qualifying uh, questions. Is there a way to view this information? This form? I'm sorry. Is there a form, an external form that you can that will show me? Why? Like, is there is there an external form that people can fill to bring the data into my system? Yes, we'll get into that in a moment. Okay, okay. So so now that you've added your fields. Mm -hmm. The next thing you're going to want to do is create what we call a section or a group of a field group. So click add section. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and on the right hand side where it says section one, go ahead and click on that. Mm -hmm. And let's just call that qualify. And then uh, go ahead and on the right, on the left hand side, click on budget. Just click on the plus icon on the right. Or you can drag it, but just click on the plus. Yep. Budget. Revenue. Yep. Yep. You could drag it or you could just click on the button on the far right. Oh, uh, okay. Yep. There you go. And then do the uh, same thing for decision maker. Mm -hmm. click. You're going to have to open that field group back up. Oh, uh, okay. Just no, X, uh, click on the minimize on the right. The right. Yep. Nope. On the, yep. Down. <laughs> right there. Yeah. There you go. It's now click on the decision maker plus. Yep. Okay, pass, yeah. Good. There you go. Now save. So now you've created a, a, a section mm -hmm. for qualify. 
Now, what I want to do is show you where this appears inside of your system. It's going to show up in a few areas. Right. One, it's going to show up when you when you have a dialer campaign. So mm -hmm. you'll have that group of fields so you can enter that information. Right. Two, it's going to show up in your contact view. So go ahead and click on the right under the conversations icon on the left. Click this on one? the I, I can't see because this thing's hiding my oh. view on the left. Conversations. Oh, OK. The inbox. I, I can't see the left side of what because this this view of my face is on the left for some reason. Ah, OK. So what do you want me to click on? Just tell me what to click on. Click, uh, right underneath the conversations icon on the left, there's another, uh, there it is, it moved. Dashboard, click on it. <laughs> Dashboard, okay. Yeah, whatever that thing was on the left of this, it just hit our view. Mm -hmm. So, not dashboard, I'm sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. the, 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 go down, two more. Contact what? manager, sorry Contact about that. Contact manager, okay. Yeah. Okay, now these are sample leads, which you can delete them. Yeah. Uh, but first I want to just show you how, uh, you know, how this looks. So click on one of the names. Okay. Any one of, nope, name. Yep. Click on it. Name. Yeah. Okay. So this is how the view of your contact is going to look inside of the system. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now you're going to notice, um, on the left-hand side, there's a right under the actions item, there's a pencil. On the left hand side and the action side, there's a pencil. Okay, here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Click it. So here you can you can edit the information on your lead, and mm -hmm. then you see that little section where it says qualify. Require. Okay. Yep. There's there's your group of fields uh, that you just created. So you can have all the field groups you need, and mm -hmm. it just makes it very handy when you open up a lead to be able to go right to the area of fields that you, the section of fields that you want to edit. Right. So if you're on the phone with a customer, you could just literally go over there real quick and, and edit those fields. Okay. That's very cool. This is really good. So you can have a lot of additional fields. That are really yeah. Cool. Groups of fields that are easy to access. Mm -hmm. right? Nice. Now cl click, close that out. Mm -hmm. um, the, you know, since we're inside this area, I think it's a good idea to kind of talk about the, the actual field, Mm -hmm. or sorry, the contact itself. Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. So this is really like a very handy um, area for you to work your contacts here. You can call the lead, you right. can text the lead, you can email the lead, you can schedule a personal ringless voicemail mm -hmm. to that lead. So let's right. say, for example, you're on the phone with this customer, right? And they say, Hey, you know, give me a call tomorrow. Maybe you're like, I don't want to call this person because every time I call them, like they want to jump on the phone for like two hours and I don't have time. Here's what I'll do. I'll schedule a ringless voicemail and I'll drop it into their phone and it'll be like, Hey, John, sorry, I missed you. I don't know what happened, you know, but that's kind of a handy little feature or, you know, maybe you just want to schedule a text message that gets sent out to them the following day or something like that. You right. could do all of that on the left-hand side or sorry, on that left-hand side, right under the contact name. So if you mouse over those, mm -hmm. Uh, icons. You've got leave, leave a note, call, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you've got text, mm -hmm. you've got the email, ringless voicemail is next. Then you have add a task and also book an appointment. Okay. That's amazing. So, this is great. Wow. Yeah. So many tools in one place. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a full on contact management solution. Right. Now about this contact just shows you the basic info on the name. And then if you select lead information right underneath that, there is all of the info that you have on that lead. So for example, you'll see what group the lead is in right above that is pipeline status. So if you're using the sales pipeline, it's going to tell you what stage that the pipeline of this, of the pipeline it's in. Right. And then underneath that, whatever tags that you've added to that lead is going to show up on that left-hand side. So that lead information area is just a handy area for you to be able to quickly see what's going on with the lead. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now on the far right, we're going to go over to the far right, far all the right. way to the right, all the way to your right. Yep. Your other right, your military right. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Yeah. So right there at the top where it says pipeline, mm -hmm. click on that. Here you have deal stages, pipeline stages. So you have lead, qualified, presentation, proposal. These stages 
-hmm. are something that you can customize. We just have some default ones that are set up for you. Right. But as you're working your lead, naturally, they're going to go from that you know lead stage to a qualified stage. Maybe you have a presentation, and then after that, they close. Whatever those stages are, go ahead and close that box for me, please. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Whatever those stages are, you can easily move them into the next stage by clicking on that stage. Mm -hmm. So go ahead and click on that. And then just click qualified, for example. So now you've moved that lead to a qualified status mm -hmm. uh, or you're moving that lead to a qualified status. Mm -hmm. Now over here on the left-hand side of the opportunity, you have assign a member. Mm -hmm. Yep. And so if you have a team inside the system, mm -hmm. or maybe you have somebody that's working or generating qualified prospects for your client, right. you can select who that is going to here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then on the right, if you want to customize the color of the card, which we're going to look at here in a second. So go ahead and make it green. Yep. And then under value, value is how much is this deal worth? Let's say it's 5,000. Oh yeah, 15,000, much better. And and then close, close date is when you think, estimated close date, when is it going to close? So let's put it on the 30th. Yep. And then comments is allowing you, it's kind of like a sticky note field again. It's going to let you say some stuff about that, that prospect. Right. You know, um, we spoke about this deal in, in, le in length and he's ready to go on the 30th, uh, just needed to talk to his partner, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're done, go ahead and click update and move. Right. Okay. Update and move. Good. Yep. And so now that lead has been moved into a specific deal stage, which we're going to go ahead and take a look at. On the left-hand side of your screen, as you could see right there under lead information, the profile right. status. Of and yep. it's by Muhammad Ali. Yes. Yep. But, you know, now, on, on the left-hand side in the navigation, do you see the pipeline, pipeline uh, graph? Yeah. Right under the dashboard on the left. On the left. Your other left. Okay, I'm all here. the way to the left, all the way to the left. This is my left, all the way to the left. Up. That's you're on your right, so I don't know. Maybe your screen. Yeah, is yeah, yeah. Right. okay. This is my left. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> on your on your left, do you see where you've got the over further to the nav bar, right? No, to the nav bar. Okay, yeah. navigation bar, all the way to the left, the blue bar on your left. There you go. So go down. One more. One more. One more. The that graph. one. Click on it. Yep. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is your pipeline view. Now, pipeline view is going to allow you to work your leads in what we call a Kanban style. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this shows you all of your deal stages mm -hmm. and any leads that you have in those stages. So you could see right. this lead that we just moved into that stage, $15,000 lead. Mm -hmm. You Here you could see the name of the lead, when it was moved into that stage. You can see... Um, how many calls and text messages and emails. Mm -hmm. And then also, if you want, you can assign a, what we call a, um, uh, a, a certainty level to that lead. So okay. do you see where it says 0%? It says 0%. Yeah. Click it. So if you change that certainty, uh, actually, I'm sorry, wrong area. That's nope. That's sorry. That's something that's done automatically. I'm going to have to show you how to do that. We, okay. we, we recently changed it. So it's done automatically, but you have to sign your certainty, which okay. we'll do here in just a moment. Okay. okay. At the bottom right-hand side of that card that shows how long it's been in that status. And then the far right shows how long it's been in your system total. Right. Oh, so they're just saying, yeah, how long have I been working this lead? How long has it been in this pipeline? That's all good information. Right. Now, let's say that you're on the phone with this customer or you want to call this customer. Go ahead and click on the lead. Click, click on, on the card. The card, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, click on it. There you go. So now it's going to open that lead up. So you don't have to go to the contact manager and search for the lead and pull the lead up. You can actually open it up right here mm -hmm. and do the exact same stuff that we were doing just a moment ago. Now I'm going to continue on past the pipeline and let's talk about some of the other stuff here inside the contact manager. Right. So on the far right hand side, underneath pipeline, mm -hmm. move your mouse over to the right, to the right, to, okay. to the right, all the way to the other side of your screen. On the other side. Okay. Yep. Right there where it says attachment. Yes. Attachment. 
Uh huh. Click that. So here you can add different things that you might need to store about that contact. Maybe you collected some information from them, like a contract, mm -hmm. or maybe, you know, you have some images that they sent you that they need to be used in a web project or something of right. that nature. Right. Here is where you would save those. So you'll always be able to contact them. You don't need to have Google drive or, or something like that. You could put all that information right here and you'll be able to search the lead up and find all of that right here inside of the system. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Go ahead and close that. And then underneath attachment, you have contact uh, contracts. Mm -hmm. So contracts, these are really cool because with a contract, you know, maybe you use like an, an echo sign or Barracuda or something like that. This allows you to create a digitally, a signature, I'm sorry, a contract that can be signed with a digital signature mm -hmm. inside of our system. So there's one you can see we already have kind of a template. Mm -hmm. um, if you were to send this over to some email or whatever that you have, right. it'll, it'll actually send it to the person with a link to the contract. When they click on that link, it's going to take them to a, 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 an area where they're going to create their little basic account, mm -hmm. right? It's like put in their information. And right. then it'll open up so they can sign it. We, if they're doing it on their phone, it's, you know, you could use your finger or if they want to type in their name, they could type in their name. And then once they sign that contract, right. it's going to be saved inside that contact. Hmm. Okay. So if you have a service, like I said, a digital service contract that's right. already in there, um, you could go in and edit that. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that as well later. So go ahead and close that out. By the way, contracts, can also be tied to a deal status. So okay. you have the ability to track your customer through prospects stages. Mm -hmm. And if you're really like, you know, specific about what things need to be done before they go to the next stage, make right. sure that that contract gets signed first. Right. Invoices. Mm -hmm. Now you also have the ability to create an invoice in our system and send it out to the customer to get paid. Click add. We have two different types of invoices. You have a regular standard invoice, mm -hmm. and then you also have a recurring invoice. Oh, nice. So all you do is just put in your information, date, when it's due, save, send, voila, and they'll get the invoice and then they can pay it. Perfect. So you don't have to use a, a separate system to do your invoicing. Right. It's all saved inside the system. Excellent. This is and it's be recurring. So it means it's sent as monthly, every month. Monthly, uh, actually, yeah, monthly or, or uh, it's not sending monthly, it's hitting their account monthly or weekly, automatically. So once they, they pay that invoice, it's like recurring billing. Ah, okay, okay, perfect. Okay, go ahead and close that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that takes care of the invoices. Now next underneath that is appointments. If you had any appointments for that meeting or that contact, mm -hmm. it would show up right there under that uh, option. Now we're not gonna go into that right now. I wanna kind of finish going through the contact yeah, right. um, center screen here um, at the center. You have the, the, the center of the screen. Yep. So currently we're on activity. So the activity feed is giving you just a, all of the activity in one place. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I wouldn't send any texts because it's a, it's a, you're not set up to send text. Oh, this is okay. 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 Yep. Yeah. Yep. So if you look here on the top right hand side of that feed where it says <laughs> all mm -hmm. click on that. Oh, yeah. yeah. So here you can sort by text, by email, by RVM. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go back over to the e activity. It automatically switches. Yeah, there you go. So you have email, you have RVM inbound call and outbound call. So if you want to see specific things that's happened in that lead, right. you can easily just click on that and it'll take you right to that area mm -hmm. to be able to find that. Okay. Right. Um, next tab over to the right is scripts. So we have the ability for you to load a script in here and that script can can be viewed inside the center here. So if you want to work a phone script or, or something like that, it'll be there. There's also right. dynamic fields that can be used. We'll go into that as well a little bit later. Right. Notes. Notes is any type of note that was added either automatically by the system. So you could see opportunity change happened. Lead was added into... Uh, the mobile dialer and also added to a group, right? Those things happen automatically, but then you can also create your own note top, right. Mm -hmm. And add a manual note on that lead as well. Right. right. Then the final thing on this that I want to point out to you is tasks. Mm -hmm. So tasks are things that you might set for yourself, like call this, you know, call this customer or, um, you know, send out 
proposal or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. And here you can set yourself up to get reminded and uh, schedule a time and date for that to happen. Wow, that's good. This is very, very powerful. And then I can remind them? Well, this is for you. These are reminders for right. yourself. Well, okay, so it's a reminder. Okay. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna let them. I'm gonna let them. So this is eight p.m. I'm gonna do this zero eight a.m. Let me see what happens on that day. At task. Okay. All right. So now you have that task created. And then that's gonna send me a reminder by email and by text. Okay. Correct. Correct. So now yeah. let's go ahead and close this lead. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I wanted to just take a quick second to got, to show everybody how the contact manager works uh, or the, the contact manager itself works. But now mm -hmm. let's take a look at this other view here. Okay. So close that out. So you're in, well, that's the pipeline view. Go back over to the contact manager view far left. Yep. There you go. So the contact manager of you is really helpful. This is like, if you're like me and you like to work things in kind of like an Excel format, right. this shows all of your leads just like in a list view. Mm -hmm. So you can still do some of the handy things that we were just talking about. Right. For, for example, where it says pipeline status, that's a dropdown. You could just select the dropdown and change the status. Mm -hmm. Right. You can also click on those options there where it says contact info slash notes, those the icons for email, call and text, you could actually send a text message from here or uh, click on the call and call the lead. Mm. All of those things can happen from this area. So you don't have to open the lead to just send a quick email or just drop a quick phone call. Mm. You don't have your Twilio. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So um, that that's the, the contact view. Now, all these other fields that you're looking at, right? You've got the group, uh, you've got outbound status. So that's showing the last call status that was assigned. Right. Who has the lead assigned to them? Which if you don't have anybody assigned to the lead, then it just shows blank. Right. When is the last time that that lead was updated? Uh, the status, the lead source, where it came in from. Right. Uh, the last touch, and then also all of the communications that's happened. So any calls, texts, emails, you'll be able to see how many of those happen on the far right. And then you can also convert that lead to a client. So once right. it's a client, then you'll be able to identify them as a client. Mm -hmm. So yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's the, that's the contact manager view. Far right-hand side of that, see the little three dots? Uh, yeah. All the way to the far right. Yep. Click on that. Two dots here. Nope. Top uh, right next to create group. Yep. There you go. Create group. Yeah. Next to create group. Hit right. refresh of your screen. You've got a little glitch happening there with that phone, that phone thing. Okay. Go back over to the contact view and then click on the three dots. Yeah. So here you can export your leads. You can restore deleted leads if you accidentally delete the leads. And then also you can change your column settings for what shows up here. So click column settings. Mm -hmm. So these are the field options that are going to show in this view here. So if you wanted to see other things that's, you know, not view, viewed in the default view, you can, you know, maybe you want to see the notes area. You want to see the title, where they're located, any of those things. You just select that box and then it's going to change the field view right. uh, underneath. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. There's also some sorting options here uh, mm -hmm. under the funnel. If you click on the funnel, yep. There you could see the leads that are new with no contact yet. So if you've if you've added them into your system, uh, maybe like the last few days, and you haven't actually contacted them, you click that. It's going to show those leads, so you know who to work. You have leads with recent contact that you can see, and then also right now you have none, so it's just gonna, they're all going to default to that. And then select the next. Select the next. I'm sorry. No, the recent one shows up when you when you go by recent. Yeah, you're not going to have anything really show. No, I and see, then the I see the 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 one that we just contacted as the last one at the top. But you didn't contact it. Mm. You don't have a phone number, so. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah right, yeah, right. Okay. So click that, and then the last is leads with no touch. So leads with no touch means that you've not called, you've not texted, you've not emailed. So touch is a, a touch means you attempted, 
Mm-hmm. A contact means you've connected. Right. So if you want to know who you've tried to get a hold of, you would select touch. If you mm-hmm. want to know who you've actually t- talked to, mm-hmm. click contact. So it's very useful when you're reaching out to leads. Like, I want to try to get a hold of people. Who do I contact? Right. Select that option. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Now back into the setup stage. Um, something else I think is really, really important. We've got your phone. We've got your email. The next thing that you really need to do is let's get that calendar set up. So right up at the top in the icons view up at the top, there's a, there's a calendar. Click on that. Th- this one's? Yep. There's a calendar. Calendar icon. There it is. Click on that. <coughs> Sorry. All okay. right. So in order to create a calendar, all you have to do is just click new calendar. Mm-hmm. And let's just name it. Okay, so I was using SquidPoint. Okay. Mm-hmm. Put in a URL that you want to show up um, at the end. Make it short as you can. Right. No, 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 not a URL. Just a. Oh, okay. Just, just, yep. There you go. Right. There you go. And then uh, select a group. Let's because what this does is it adds them into this group. So I would say anybody that fills out my calendar is actually yeah lead or a prospect right lead or prospect okay okay leads yeah or prospect. Yeah, and yeah and then underneath that you have add tags so mm-hmm. if you don't have any tags in the system yet but if you had some tags that you wanted added to that lead when they added that so maybe you want booked appointment as a tag that way you know later on you can say hey anybody who's ever booked an appointment and go back and see that just by sorting for tags inside of the contact manager Right. You can also remove tags. So, for example, you want to, maybe you have a tag that needs to be removed when somebody books an appointment. Mm-hmm. You know, you can have that uh, done automatically when they do that. You right. can also assign a pipeline status when they fill out that appointment. So, go ahead and click on the pipeline status. Maybe automatically they get moved into uh, qualified. Right? I don't know. We're just uh, throwing yeah. that out there. Okay. So, what will happen is when they fill out that calendar appointment, they're going to become qualified. Mm-hmm. Status public means that link is actually going to be. I'm sorry. Um, Are we mouse over the status? Status public. Yeah. I. Oh, there's a. I. There's a. Um, a little info. Yes. Choose. What does that say? Cal- you can make it calendar public. public or private. That's what it is. Right. So you want this to be public, right? So right. people can actually you can share the link to them. Right. Redirect URL, URL is going to allow you after the calendar is completed to take them to some other page. So maybe you have a thank you page or something that you want them to see after they book an appointment. Maybe you created a video that's like, hey, thank you so much for booking an appointment. I'm so excited to talk to you. Mm-hmm. So we're going to see each other at this time. Make sure you have these things available so I can close you with no problem and you can give me all your money that's in your bank account. You right. put that information there. <laughs> um Underneath that, redirect option, yes or no. And then you have uh, allow multiple appointments on one time. So what that means is if you have it set to no, only one slot can be on each appointment. If right. you select yes, maybe you have a group. You know, possi- no, maybe you have a possibility of somebody not showing, mm. right? Right. And or even like you said, more people that are having access to that calendar. And it's okay for you to have more than one person booked in the same slot. If you right. select yes, then you can do that. Next underneath that is allow notification status. Um mm-hmm. yeah. okay. And then uh in underneath that is the assigned type. So we have the feature inside of this system to where you can actually round robin appointments to people inside your calendar. So if you have like a team of four people or five people yeah. inside your inside your system right. and you want, you know, the, the lead or the appointments to just go down the queue. Mm-hmm. So Muhammad gets one, then Mark gets one, then Peter gets one, and then it goes back to Muhammad, then it goes back to Mark. And that that would be round robin. Okay. Right. Right. What's really cool is everybody can have different schedules and stuff like that. So the system will look to see who's available whenever somebody books an appointment first. And then that's the first thing that happened. Mm-hmm. Now here you're setting your schedule. So the days that you want to be available and the times, you got to make sure you do select the times there. Mm-hmm. From? Uh, yeah, morning time, let's <clears throat> say maybe it's 9 a.m. to 
9 a.m. Okay, 9 a.m. to to. Three I would say like when do you take your lunch? 11. So 9 a.m. to 11 or 11:30, right? Oh, okay. Right. So that's your morning times. 11:45 a.m. Yeah. Okay. And then appointment evening or afternoon time would be when do you come back from lunch oh. until when you end your day? Until five or four forty-five. There you go. Mm -hmm. And now you can also add busy time days, stuff like that in there. Um, here you have the ability to select the colors that you want to show up on your calendar for times that are busy, right? right. Yeah. So let, let's go ahead and select busy color, maybe make it red. Red. Or okay. orange or whatever. Right. Not available. Maybe you want to make that uh, green or not green, yellow. Right. And then uh, booked appointments. Maybe you want to make that green for money. Green for money. Cash. Okay. There you go. Appointment duration. How long your appointments are. You want your appointments to be allowed 30 minutes. If you want to add a gap, which I personally don't suggest doing, but if you want to add a gap in between your appointments, so you have time to get, ready for the next appointment, Five then minutes. it's going to try to restrict it. The problem with that though, is, is it does mess up your calendar. Mm -hmm. uh, so you only have so many times in the day. So I personally just leave it zero appointment title. This is what's going to be sent over to them. So let's say appointment with, or let's say meeting with Muhammad Ali mm -hmm. and, and, uh -huh, and, mm -hmm. And then see where it says select token. Go ahead and select the token. And let's add first name. And then hit, there you go. And then last name. Oh, nice. That's cool. Yeah. So when they get their notification it, and inside their calendar, it's going to say meeting with Muhammad Ali and their mm -hmm. name. So that way they know what this is about. Right. Now, auto approve appointment request. This is really <clears throat> important. If somebody fills out a link on your calendar and you have that set to no, Mm -hmm. then, yep. then it, yeah, you have to go and approve it for them to be approved. I always set that to yes. You could always go back and cancel them, right? Right. Appointment description. Here's where you would put whatever information is going to show up in the appointment description on someone's calendar. So maybe you want to share a link. Uh, maybe you want to tell them how they're going to be, how you're going to be meeting. So typically what I say, this is a meeting that's going to be held on your phone and we will, uh, and I will give you a call at this time, right? Uh, or at the specified time. And then here again, you have tokens. So mm -hmm. you could say, this is a meeting on your phone. I will call you at. The appointment. And then put, no, no, delete that real quick. Select where it says appointment. And then select their phone number, mobile phone or whichever one, right? Mobile. Now it's going to show their phone there. So, you, so they know where you're going to be calling them. Okay, phone right there. Yep. I'll call you at the appointment time. How do you put that? No, you, you don't need to put that. Just just, uh, okay. just say, I will call you at the scheduled time or whatever. Okay, that's fine. Okay. All right. Appointment location. This is a text field. So you could put in, you know, uh, phone appointment. Now, underneath this, you have SMS, email, and voicemail reminders. So you can set reminders, as many as you want, for yourself and for the lead. Now, typically what I do on the self-reminder mm -hmm. is I say uh, my phone number, cell phone number. Right. Okay, put phone number. And then under name, mm -hmm. or sorry, message, sorry. Mm -hmm. I'll put what is the token number? For? That's your phone number where the, the message is going to be sent. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So that's your reminder, right? Mm -hmm. Now, under the message text, here's the message that you would send to yourself. So, for example, hey, Mohammed, mm -hmm. you have a meeting in 10 minutes. Right. And then put a, put a colon. Mm -hmm. And then Right there where it says insert token, hit the drop down where it's Which one? Uh, the drop down above the message text where yep. here you have the ability to add lead notification link. Go ahead and click that. And then click insert. Make sure there's a space between minutes and there you go. And click insert token. 
So what this does is when it sends you a text, that lead notification link is now a clickable link that will take you on your mobile phone mm -hmm. to see that lead. So if you're not at, in the office, right. you can look at that lead information on your phone. Oh, so that's you can cool. call them, you can text them, you can change the everything on your mobile phone. And you don't have to download an app or anything like that. That's nice. Okay? That's now, where it says remind me before, change that to 10. Uh, remind me. Down. Before. Change that to 10. So now you have a reminder set for yourself. Mm -hmm. Just go ahead and click add reminder. And you can add as many as you'd like. Mm-hmm. So yeah. if you don't want that reminder, just click the red X. Same thing goes for the lead. You could do the exact same thing for the lead. The only thing you cannot do is send them the lead link because that's <laughs> only for you, right? For you, yeah. But you can say here, you say, hey, John, or no, hey, first name, click name, mm -hmm. name. Okay. Click, click the token, yep. We have a meeting mm -hmm. starting soon or right. you could you could actually put in the time so like in this case let's take the starting soon out uh, appointment time and date yep and put we have a meeting on and then put the that yep and then you can set the reminder time see where it says remind me yeah so you could make that you know like a day before or something oh uh, okay this is day right. one day. Yep. But you could do all of these reminders, as many as you'd like, right here inside the system. So text, email, and you can also send them a, a, a voicemail, direct voicemail as well. Now, the final thing at the bottom here where it says pixel code, this mm -hmm. is like if you're using Facebook advertising or Google or that sort of thing, and you want to notify Google or Facebook that somebody was on the calendar, Right. That's where you would do that. Perfect. Go ahead, and, go ahead and click save. Submit. Submit. So now you have your calendar set up. What did I see? Oh, the phone number is missing. Oh, yeah. Okay, let's do that again. Submit. Okay. So now you have your calendar set up. Now click on the calendar icon again. Once you've set up your calendar up at the top. Yes. Up at the top. Or All the here. Way to, yeah. Click on that. Once you've set up your calendar, then you'll have the view right here in the access to be able to see your calendar. Okay. Um, one thing you want to do is change the status right here to default. The status to default. Yeah. Yes. Turn it to get, click. Yes. Yes. All right. Once you've defaulted your calendar, now when you go into your calendars, click on the icon again. It's going to show you by default your calendar view here. So you see your week view. Oh, nice. The whole yeah. Week. Yeah. yeah. But you also can see month view or day view. And then if you have more than one calendar set up, there's a drop down on the top that you can see all of those. Now, if you ever need to go back into the settings, click on calendar settings. All right. And then you'll be able to see your calendar here. You also can sync your calendar up with Outlook and, and Google. Google. Excellent. Yep. Now, sharing your calendar link. Click on the link. This one? Yep. Here, you can either share the link at the top or you can embed it on your website or as a pop-up on your website or some kind of other widget. Mm, so, so this is the way it'll look on their website or, I mean, when they click on the link. It automatically detects their time zone. And then here, that's a past appointment. Yeah. Okay. Past. Click in the future. Yeah. So here you can select, yep, select the date and time. Why does it show 4 p.m. twice? Uh, not sure. We'll have to look at your settings. Okay. But probably got something a little mess messed up when you were doing your settings. But here it'll take them to the form. Right. Now, Go back to your um, settings real quick in your calendar. One more thing I want to show you is how to edit those fields. Close that. Okay. See right here where you got the little plus icon next to the calendar yeah. widget? Yeah. Click that. Here, you can customize the fields that show up on the calendar. So if you don't want them to be required or you, you don't want them to be active, just change them from required to not required. 
yeah. and not active. So this way you might only just need name, email, phone, or name, email, mobile phone Good. that gets filled out after they book the calendar. Mm. So there you go. I mean, those are the main things like you want to go through in order to get set up. So now you can book appointments. You can start making phone calls and sending text messages. You can send emails, like all the basic stuff. Use your contact manager and then, you know, get, get started basically. Okay. okay, perfect. That is, I think let's stop there for today because I think uh, we don't want to overwhelm people. <laughs> um, so we'll, 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 we'll continue another, you know, we'll do, we'll do a few more sessions. So, so far, that was like the basic foundations of how this works. Let's answer some of the questions, okay? And then sure. we'll, we'll be done. Uh, let's see here. So somebody's asking this question. Does the system scrape against the federal DNC? And is it legal to send a cold SMS to an individual or business in California? Okay. So first answer is the system has a integration with a service uh, called... Um, it's called um, uh, dnc.com. Mm -hmm. So if you want to scrub your numbers against the DNC list, mm -hmm. uh, DNC list, mm -hmm. then you first of all have to have a subscription to uh, the SAN number. Right. So, um, and there's actually, if you go, go back over to the system real quick, please. Mm -hmm. Let's go back. Okay. Let me, okay. Give me one sec. Before you do that, give me one sec. I want to make sure. Okay. You want to do it from your end? No, give me one second. Hold on. Let, let me let me show you guys. Uh, can I share my screen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Share. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Facebook. I don't know where the uh, meeting is. Is it a web thing? Because mm. now it's gone. No. Oh, there it is. Okay, I found it. <laughs> okay. You have to share the screen. Share your screen it's at the bottom. Okay, you see my screen? Yep. Google's. Yeah. Okay. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to sign up for the FTD. The subscription. Mm -hmm. I think it's subscription, first one, yeah. And uh, uh, Sandberg is what it's called, right? So here, um, subscription account number is what that stands for, right? right. So let's see, we go to the PC. You're cutting off a little bit. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me okay? Yes, I hear you, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Oh. So on that marketing dot do not call dot profile slash create. It shows you how to register to get a SAN number, a registry number. So if you click on this, here it's going to tell you what you need to do. Mm -hmm. It's going to tell you how to get the number from the C. Right. SAN number, then you can for a C service like DNC, they have that store, sort of right. scrubbing solution. Another option, mm -hmm. again, I'm not giving you legal advice here. I'm just saying something I've heard of before. It's called the dncproject.org. Mm -hmm. And so these guys, you don't have to, I don't know if they have the SAN number, enter. you don't enter the SAN number, but you can actually scrub your list here just by importing it. Right. And let's see here. For example, if you want to get a price on that, let's say you had 10,000 numbers. Mm -hmm. This is what they charge for a DNC scrub. All right. So hopefully that helps. 
Okay, and then you import that into the DNC list? No, this is scrubbing. Let's say you had a list of 10,000 numbers you wanted to scrub against the federal do not call list. I'm just showing right. you this, this uh, company offers that. Again, right. I don't know anything about them besides what I'm telling you. I've heard okay. of them and I know some people use them. That's all I know. Okay, good. Oh, and the other part of the question, is it legal to send a cold SMS to an individual or business in California? So I'm not, a, I'm not really familiar with the state laws as much because I'm in Nevada and most of my business is done in Nevada. Um, right. If I'm going to do state, if I'm worried about state stuff, but I'm going to tell you federally and also with the carriers mm -hmm. based off of the new 10 DLC uh, things that I was telling you about in the very beginning, if you were here, right. you're not going to send cold SMSs mm -hmm. because it's just not something that's legal right. by the carrier standards. They have something called CTIA mm -hmm. and the CTIA it's in their handbook. It's not something that they, they allow. Right. And then if you read like Twilio mm -hmm. uh, under Twilio's um, guidelines, it's exactly the same thing. So I personally would refrain from all text type prospecting. Right. I would, if you're going to do it, do it over the phone, make the phone call uh, or send a cold email. Good. And somebody's asking when you when you have those leads or prospects coming into your contact manager, can you set up lead follow up automation campaign? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that that's something we'll have to go over in another. So another um, another day. Okay. So that's a good one. I'm gonna put that down so that we don't forget next time. Uh, follow ups and lead automate. Okay, lead follow ups. Okay, that's our next step. Uh, the next question. Okay. Yes, recording available. Yes, we are recording the session. Yes, that somebody asked. Mm, client, how do you know source? Mm, I see most of the questions are there. Okay, you'll be watching tonight. Mm. Ali says from experience. I don't know what that is. Okay, good. I think we got most of the questions answered. That's the basic foundation for how to set up the phone number. You have all the training and everything you need, how to set up your calendar. We did that, how to add a lead. This is good. So I think we can end it here today and then we'll go from there. Uh, next session. Do we do the same time tomorrow or another time? Oh, tomorrow, uh, no. I have to do um, Right. maybe later in the day tomorrow if you want to do it. Tomorrow or later, I, like nighttime. I mean, probably, yeah, nighttime would be better because okay. I have church. Okay, let's do that then. At nighttime, nine p.m. your time. So, sounds good. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Really appreciate, it. guys. The deal is live on digitalthing.io. If you go on the website, you should be able to grab it. Only few seats left on the doubling the, you know, the the team members. We'll talk about how the team members and clients have their differences. Uh, in our next session, so uh, yeah, let's 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 meet up. Hopefully, we catch up soon. See you tomorrow evening. Okay. See you later, guys. Okay, bye.